as we talk about thank you, count your many blessings. I had my head down and I was having my computer running my brains and I was just trying to go back and think about the many blessings that I have been, God has given me in my lifetime. I couldn't think of all of them. There's just too many of them. And, and I would just, and I think sometime we need to do that. And I want to play this song to tie in with this message that the Lord have given me today for you. And I think sometimes we forget, we forget how blessed we are. Amen? Amen. We, we forget that. But if you have your Bibles with you this morning, or your electronic devices, please turn to Acts chapter 12. We're going to read verse 1 through 7, and then we're going to go over and read verse 24. Acts chapter 12, 1 through 7. Oh, he, had, oh, he got 1 through 6. It would be good. And then we're going to go to uh, verse 24. Amen? Amen. When you find it, say amen. And if you don't want to find it, look on the screen. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, take your time and find it. Are we, are we there? Uh, shall we read? Please remain standing. Our gracious Father, once again, we come in your presence. And first, Lord, we want to say this morning, thank you for being God in our life. And thank you for waking us up and encouraging us, Lord, to come to the house of prayer. Realize, Lord, many things have occurred in our life this week, but thanks be to God, Lord, you have Keep us safe and you keep us going. But Lord, if it's thy will, I pray in the name of Jesus now that those names that was called this morning, that you some way, somehow, you know better than I, to comfort those families. And Lord, let them know in the name of Jesus that no situation that they are going through that you cannot handle. We ask you, Lord, to bless us today here that whatever happened, Lord, we will let our light so shine that wherever we go, people will recognize that we are children of God. Bless us now, which only you can do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You may be seated. This was subject this morning, someone that I think some of us have said some, somewhere, sometime in our life. Why me, Lord? Why me, Lord? I want to start off with this, that a man said once, 
Lord, what have I done to deserve all of this? This teacher asks this preacher. He explained to him that I tried so hard to raise my children to know the Lord. He said, everything I've done, I've tried to do it with the love of God. He said, but my 15-year-old son has always been in church, be a part of the youth, and he seemed to be doing everything like I would love him to do, like I wanted him to do. He's a good A student in school. But he said, I found out my 15-year-old child is on drugs. And he asked him the question, Lord, what have I done, preacher, to deserve this? The answer is, you haven't done anything. Perhaps you expressed that question too. You said it when someone had died in your family or someone had got hurt or you've come across an illness that there's no too far at the present time. And you want to run a calculated repertoire in your mind and say, what have I done, Lord, to deserve all of this that I'm going through with? But sometime as a believer, we do not think things are supposed to happen to us. Here we will find in the scripture that this man here is filled with the Holy Ghost. Was there at the day of Pentecost. Not only that, he was in the inner circle with Jesus Christ. And sometime I want you to understand this morning, as children of God, you don't have to do anything for trouble to come your way. You don't have to do anything to fall prey to someone because he or she does not like you. You see, let me say the sin is evil and it brings on evil. Amen. Here we find out here in this book before I get to verse 2. And now the time Herod the king decided to stretch forth his hand against the church. And you're part of a church. You will feel the hands of people. You will feel the resentment of individuals. Not because you have done anything, it's because they have the opportunity to do what? To cause you misery. And then you ask yourself, why me, Lord? Why me? Well, he decided to vex the church. The church is rolling. Let me back up here. You remember, they killed Deacon Stevens for just trying to live for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. People will persecute you because you want to do right. Don't forget that now. Remember that because you want to do right. You want to live right. You want your children to do good. But yet sometime, it doesn't happen that way. I'm reminded of someone told me that they live in the upper class neighborhood. Their husband and their wife had good jobs, listen to me. And these two family, both of them had boys and girls. And they were doing pretty good until they got in their teenage years. And when they got in their teenage years, one family children start doing better than the other. 
Then they finished high school. And both families sent their in the children to college. One family children continued to do good. The other family children dropped out. And the lady said when they would go to meetings and gathering because they was well known, good job, knowing good in society. And she didn't like when they would bring up how your children are doing. And she said sometimes she would not answer it correctly or say they're doing fine. And she said sometimes I was wondering, Lord, what have I done wrong? For my children not to look like successful. And this family, children here, they had the same opportunity, the same everything, this good families, good education, and yet they seem like nothing is going right for them. The attitude, what have I done to deserve this? The answer is nothing. This is just life itself. And all of us, some way or some high, will experience things like this in your home, on your job, with your friends, and your neighbors. You will experience this and you will ask this question, why me, Lord? What have I done? And then you want to rely on your what? Spirituality. Then you want to see what you do in the church. But the God's supposed to bless you because you do that? No. That's your obligation and your what? Responsibility. And here we move down. You see, the Old Testament had that saying, if you did good, it was because God was blessing you. And if it was going, your family was going the other way, it was because you were doing something wrong in your life. Remember Job's friend told Job that. Job, you must have did something wrong because what if you didn't, God would be blessing you. But you're going through this hellish thing now, so you may, you just well have come clean with ourselves. But here we find that this is what's going to happen. Now, he killed James, verse 2, the brother of John. James was one of the brothers of thunder, James and John. Not only that, you remember they weren't, one wanted to sit on the left and one wanted to sit on the right. And God said, it's not mine to give, but you will go through this. What did James do for to have his head cut off? Nothing. Nothing but serve God and my Christian friends. Let me tell you this. We are told they persecuted the church. For what? Religious? Political? See, persecution comes from all forms. Some of you have been persecuted. And you ask your question, what have I done for people to treat me like that? And you just well join it, and some of you are going to still be persecuted. But the thing is that you do like these men, you hold on to God's unchanging hand, and you let your faith rely on you, and you stand up for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because I don't care how hard it looked to man, it doesn't look that hard to God, and God is able to rescue you and save you to deliver you, to help you see it through in the name of Jesus. Then, I must say to you this. You see, what lies behold all, behind all sin is lies and evil. Don't you ever forget that. Now, I tell this, Roman 1, God, God owes us nothing. Think about what God, what God owe you? Nothing. Not a thing. Not one thing that God owe you. 
You see, we act as though we deserve the goodness of God. We act like we, God owes us many blessings from God. And we live a carefree life as long as anything doesn't block our travel. But you see, we act like God is obligated to bless you. You act like God is, is obligated to always rescue you. You see, let me tell you something. I've had it. Sometimes you haven't prayed until tears come out of your eyes when you're praying to an almighty God. When you're praying and you're asking God, What's all this going on? And the tears are washing down. Your clothes letting you know that, God, I can't make it unless you rescue me, unless you help me. I'm praying in the name of Jesus, Lord. Have mercy on me. And you still go through these things. But guess what? A lot of time you don't die. You're able to talk about it. And listen here, God owes us nothing. You see, we watch what I'm going to say to you now. Watch me. You never question, all of you looking at me, you never question the good that God does for you. You never question all the good and all the blessing that God bestowed upon you. You only question when bad things happen to you, and then you want to know why God is doing it. Well, why don't you question when you're receiving all those blessings? You see, you ask, why me, Lord? You don't say that when God is blessing you. You see, when the, when the verse occurs, sometime it happens, that's, we, that's when we question God. Well, he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. They're having a hard time getting this church men. Now, these guys are filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Huh? They, 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 they're there. This guy here, the head starts the church. He's preaching God's word. But I want to let you know, because you're serving, that don't mean nothing's not going to happen to you. You see, Satan wants to attack you. Those of us that serve God, you are his prime target. And, and if he can get a hold to you and let you with, drop out and don't pray and lose your faith, like I say, lose, you can't lose it, but you quit praying and trusting God, he got you. That's his objective, to get you to walk away. Say, I'm not going to serve anymore. They're mistreating me. They're talking about my children. They're talking about my husband. They're lying on me. They won't put me on a committee. And I'm going to walk away and let them have the church. But if you got Christ in your life, if you got Christ in your life, you must stay there. Stay there. Serve. Be committed to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, that you're getting the one now that told Jesus that, Lord, I won't desert you. You can count on me. One that said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You're the one that was sitting in the boat with the other 12, did not you jumped out. Holy Jim said, Lord, can I come to you? He said, come, Peter. Peter came. As long as he kept his eyes on Jesus. Whoo! Hey! As long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was all right. The same thing with you. As long as you keep your eyes 
on Jesus, you're going to be able to make it. But once you take your eyes off of him, You know, there's a song they sang. There's a storm out on the horizon, and it's heading this way. And some of you all say, I've been in a storm. I just come out of a storm and look like a nun is heading my way. Well, and he saw, watch it now, Herod the king. He saw that it pleases the Jews. When somebody see and think that it pleases somebody to do that to you, do what they do, they continue on with it. Because it make them feel good. And he followed to take Peter where the day of the unleavened bread, we talk about the time of the Passover, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. Peter, what have you done? I haven't done anything. Why me? You don't see what he said. Why me, Lord? Say that. Because he knew God had been good to him. He knew that he's serving the true and the living God. And he realized sometime as Christian, we're going to have to suffer. Come on now. But I tell you what, your suffering and your trials will make you strong. If you've been through something, you can give a testimony about how it made you strong. I'm better today than I was two weeks ago or two months ago because what God brought me through, I knew it was nothing but a God. And I stood firm on his word knowing that one thing, I can't fail for the God that I serve. I'm not going to give up as long as I don't quit. God won't quit in my life. And I'm telling you, this is what we got to do. We got to hold on to God and change in hand. So, this. See, all good things that we experience come from the grace of God. Did you hear what I say? All good things that we experience come from the grace of God. Amen? You see, God has given us grace. Why? Why did he do it? One thing, because he loved us. He loved us. That's why he gave it to us. Let me say this to you. There was a man who had six children. And he dropped out in school at the, in the sixth grade. But he always wanted his children to have a good education. Out of his six children, None of them finished high school. The oldest boy, when he got of age, he joined the military. Another one got married, and he got a divorce. Another one of his children was at the hospital when he was talking because his son was having a child and he and this lady was not married. The man asked this preacher, what have I done to deserve this? And he said, preacher, I asked the Lord, why me? Why me? I've done everything I know to do. I was a good father. I had a good home. I brought them up, teaching the word of God to them. 
But when they got of age, they decided all of them to walk away. And with tears in his eyes, he wanted to know what you want to know sometimes. Where did I go wrong? You said it. Where did I go wrong? And then he say, like you and I, I don't understand it. And this is the question you say when you don't understand it. You said this, what is God doing to me? I don't see him doing to the neighbor down the street. He don't serve God at all. Hmm? I don't see him. He don't know what a church don't look like. But look like he's doing better than me. And you ask the question, Lord, why me? And then, I want you to understand this. You see, I don't want you to serve God with the idea that you serve God because you want him to bless you. You, you, you want to work singing in the choir because you're looking for God to bless you. You obligate to God to bless you because you come to church and you don't do nothing else. Come on now. Hmm? You see, let me say this to you. You cannot buy God blessing. You can't buy it. God bless those I want to bless, it says in the book. And I curse those I want to curse. You see, it's all left up to God. You and I cannot correct God. Hello. Hello. God is not our equal. Amen? You see, sometimes you feel like you may be a victim of a conspiracy. Somebody's after me. Something is going wrong. But I tell you, when you get in that mold in your life, that's why I had me sing that song. I want you to get a piece of paper out. And I want you to write down, count your blessings that the Lord has blessed you with. Go back to when you can remember and see how many times that God has pulled you out of situation. How many times that God has blessed you and you didn't even expect the blessing. And all of a sudden, you just boom, 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 boom. I'm going to bless you today. And you went and told somebody how God blessed you today. Now, I want you to write it down now. I don't write down the blessings that God has given you because I've tried it. And I'll tell you what, you don't have enough paper. Amen. Amen. You don't have enough paper. Now, I'm going to give you a verse here because this may fit you sometime. Give me Job. Job 23, verse 3. Then I'm going to verse 89. I'll be through. Time will let me. Oh, that I knew where I might find him. Go. That I might come even to his what? Seat. Amen. I want to find him. What you I'm going to tell him something. What you going to tell God that he doesn't already know? Huh? What you got that God don't know just yet? Whatever you got is because God has given it to you. It's not because you did it on your own. God bless you to have it. God blessing you to keep it. And it's God Almighty that sustained your life and my life. And what you going to tell God? Give me verse 8 and 9, I'll be closing because I can't get it on. And this is what he says. And I've been there praying. Sometimes I've got on my knees. I do my hand like this. And I'm searching for the Spirit. 
And I said, to behold, I go forward, but he's not there. I back forward, but I cannot precede him. You ever been praying and wondering where is God while you're down there? And look what it says. On the left hand, where he do, does work, do work, but I cannot behold him. He hides himself on the right hand that I cannot what? See him. Don't take that down right there now. But I can behold him. He hides himself from me. And sometimes when we were going through many things in our lives, it seemed to us we perceived this. We perceived this. That God is hiding from us. And it looked like he won't answer our prayers. And then you want to say, what have I done wrong? Nothing. Nothing. He ever tell about that God is making you stronger? That God is working on you, giving you a testimony to tell others? And when you come out from under the suppression, when all the trouble that was holding you down that way, you, you've risen above it. Then you will have an opportunity to tell somebody somewhere that you can count on God. And remember this, when it seems hard to God and seem like God not going to do anything, God let it stay so you can, he can move man's hands off of it. And man can't take the credit for it. And only man can say, glory be God, of whom all blessing full, because the God that I serve this day have delivered me from my persecution, from my oppression. And this is what I want you to remember. When you're going through it, don't forget that God, if he got his eyes on the sparrow, he's got his eyes on you. Don't forget that man called Jesus. Never sleep not slumber. He watches over all of his children. Okay. I see time telling me I got to go. But I thank God for you this morning. Why me, Lord? Look out. Look toward God. And live in faith knowing always God always go with us. He said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Huh? Come unto me, y'all ye that heavy and heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and low in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. And when the cloud looked like park over your home and the rain seemed like it will not stop, he have an answer for you. And he said this, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Huh? And some say, we don't know where you're going. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. And today, my Christian friends, those of you who have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, May I bid you to come. Because there's a storm arising out there. And it hadn't this away in your life. But we have a Savior whose name is Jesus Christ who died on the cross of Calvary for your sins and my sin that you will not have to go through it with anymore. Because he paid the ultimate price. He prayed it, paid it with his life. And we are so thankful 
for what he's done for us. And so, as I plead today, is there one willing to let Jesus Christ become your Savior? And you become his servant, he become your master. I don't know when he's going to touch you to come home. But if you was in the ark of safety with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you're going to say, you're going to hear that voice say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Huh? Yes. And you're, you've been fighting a good fight. But you, Jesus Christ, is there with you. Is there one this morning? Is there one? Go ahead, Dennis. God bless you this morning. Trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to, to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, I, I love Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now and forever. Let the whole church say. Amen.